So modders are gradually turning Fallout 4 into the ultimate Fallout game. And you might be sitting here wondering, well, what does that even mean? And really, it's how over the past several months, and really over the past year or so, several mods have released for Fallout 4, adding in some of the best or just fan favorite features from other Fallout games. In some instances, actually pulling up mods from older games, that being New Vegas and Fallout 3 specifically, adding in features or even items to appear in those games into Fallout 4, but also a major trend or theme you'll see all throughout this video are features of Fallout 76 being recreated and added into Fallout 4. Basically, taking some of these awesome parts of other games and adding them all to this central one that we all know and love and have been playing for years now. And in this video, I want to highlight some of those mods and hopefully actually get you interested in Fallout 4 again, even if you've been playing one of the other ones, because there might be some similarities between the two now. If you guys enjoy the content, you can leave a like or subscribe. I just found out my rent's going up 18%. So hey, extra likes, more algorithm points, we love that. But first and foremost, let's take a look at a familiar mod, that with Level Up Menu EX. You've probably seen this mod before as I've covered it several times, but more or less what it'll do is add in a framework to add skills and perks into Fallout 4. A mod acting on that is Be Exceptional. This actually being a relatively simple mod, what it'll do is adapt the perk system of Fallout 4 into a skill and perk system like we saw in past games. So on the left hand side, you have all of your special stats as well as the actual perks themselves and on the right hand side, certain skills. This makes it so leveling up or how you evolve your character in Fallout 4 is a lot more dynamic and interesting. But that's old news. The new and exciting thing on the block is Perks 76. What this mod's going to do is add in some of the fan favorite perks from Fallout 76, technically perk cards in Fallout 76, but either way, bringing these awesome features into Fallout 4 and adding them in via the system. So in total, 20 perks added into Fallout 4, each having several levels and each having a special stat requirement to unlock each of those levels. Some of my favorites are goat legs, so you take reduced fall damage depending on how many ranks you have, incisor, which will actually make it so you swing your melee weapon a bit faster in game, which is immensely handy for specific builds, the suppressor perk, which makes it so enemies will have reduced damage for a certain amount of time after you attack them, and what is probably my favorite overall, especially for survival game builds, barbarian, giving you additional damage resist for each point of strength you currently have allocated. Overall, it's a relatively minor one at first glance, but across an entire playthrough, these are pretty fun, and again, you might be familiar with several if you've been playing Fallout 76 anyway. But something else that may look familiar from Fallout 76 is Power Armor, as we also see several of those making their way over to Fallout 4. Specifically, a recent release was the Red Shift Power Armor. So funny enough, this version, which released for Fallout 76 a few months ago, was a $15 microtransaction. Alternatively, you could download this version for free for Fallout 4 right now. Of course, these having a communist theme, you could find them at thematically appropriate locations in Fallout 4, where perhaps you'll find some other Chinese characters, but there's actually a bit more in the way of power armor. This mod author has also brought over the excavator power armor, this being pretty memorable because if you have each piece equipped in Fallout 76, it would give you plus 100 carry weight, and guess what? It does the exact same thing in Fallout 4, which is another pretty special addition. This one actually coming with some additional skins and customization options, several of which were also microtransactions in Fallout 76. Funny enough, but last but not least, probably the best implemented of the three is the Ultra Sight Power Armor. So this one just looks cool. I think it is arguably one of the best designed new power armors to make its debut with Fallout 76. And of course, it looks great in Fallout 4, being heavily inspired by that Fallout 76 variant, but having some minor changes here or there. But in Fallout 4, actually going to the Glowing Sea, you will now find little Ultra Sight sprouts pop up, and you'll craft this power armor at a totally new crafting table. But okay, even though all of those are pretty cool, maybe you're over Fallout 76. So alternatively, we do have some additions from everybody's favorite Fallout game, Fallout New Vegas. A recent new release for Fallout 4 is the Recharger Gun, which is a pretty special one and really memorable one from Fallout New Vegas. As you could probably tell, it's a new energy weapon for Fallout 4. It has some customization options, you could make it more of a rifle, a few different barrel lengths, and of course some scopes to go along with it. But the very unique aspect of this particular weapon is that there's no ammo. Simply by using this weapon, you will fire shots and over time the weapon will gradually recharge and add additional shots. The magazine size on this one can be customized but by default it is going to be seven shots in total and after you fire those seven shots you'll gradually start accumulating them back up again. It really is cool and actually the lighting effects with the little bulbs lighting and dimming as you fire is another really nice touch. In general it's a well implemented mod into Fallout 4 definitely skewing towards the earlier levels or being on the weaker side. On one hand you do have free ammo but also it doesn't do the 
most damage, but that's kind of the intended balance of this one. Towards the latter half of the game, it's not like you're oftentimes stressing about ammo anyway, and it's a fun one for the nostalgia perspective, but also just because it is a cool and unique mechanic. But then what has probably become my most satisfying weapon mod to use of 2020 thus far, we also do have the Colt Single Action Army from Fallout New Vegas. This one actually coming as a part of the larger Fallout 4 New Vegas mod. So this one's kind of a double whammy in that some of the edits you can make on it using the weapon customization system are very true to Fallout New Vegas, while some others are actually kind of true to the single action revolver you have in Fallout 76. So a two-fronted approach to bringing features from other games. But in general, it has some basic or minor customization options, but the premier aspect of this one is when you're using it and specifically in first person and firing. I don't know what it is about revolvers and Fallout 4's combat system, but I find the combination of these two together is just very fun to use. You have several different barrel lengths as well as several different ammo types you can equip this with, dealing increasing amounts of damage, and from there, you can take down enemies both near and far away. And it's also pretty nice that you can customize this to deal a pretty big punch, but of course it does have the trade-off of a slower rate of fire. But another cool little quirk of this mod is it comes with built-in support for the bullet counted reload system, otherwise known as BCR. This is actually one of the best mods Fallout 4 has ever gotten, making it so you can reload one bullet at a time or two bullets at a time. You don't have to go through the entire animation to just reload any amount. But even further, one of the much more satisfying features is you can reload one bullet and then actually cancel the animation and start firing with however much ammo you've re-put into the gun. Which maybe that sounds weird putting it into words, but in gameplay it makes using weapons that support this much, much more satisfying. But if you truly want to feel like a gunslinger in Fallout 4, the Colt Single Action Army will get you part of the way there. But to complete it, you definitely need the Cowboy Repeater. They're the one I've talked a bit about in the past, but any excuse to talk more about this one is definitely worth it as it is easily one of my favorite weapon mods of the year. This also does support the bullet counted reload system, and between that and the lever action reload, it is immensely satisfying to use in Fallout 4. Definitely perfect for DMR or sniper build characters. But as long as we're going down this route of recreating ourselves as a New Vegas cowboy in the Wild West, another great addition to this is the Cross Mojave Manhunter. So now technically not being a direct recreation of any single mod or armor from Fallout New Vegas, it is heavily inspired by that New Vegas style, and also just looks great. It's fully modular, so each of these are individual pieces. You can use some of them or all of them at the same time, but sometimes just using some of these armor pieces looks better than all of them. And even further, it does feature a couple of customization options. So you could change up the look of this one if you want something a bit more distinctive. And overall, with these three together, you are fully embracing that New Vegas style in Fallout 4. And honestly, it was just a ton of fun even filming this in the background. But something else you may have noticed that was a feature in older games, but unfortunately didn't make an appearance in the newer ones, are weapons on my back or on my hip. Another more recent mod release for Fallout 4 is the classic holstered weapon system, which literally just works. This making it so if you put away a weapon, it'll pop up on your hip or on your back. I've covered this on the channel in the past, and since its initial release, it has received several updates, these just being tweaks or refinements, making it work even a bit better. It did have a few bugs at launch, and some people had crashing problems, but now it really is phenomenal. Download any weapon mod or use any vanilla weapon, holster it, and you'll see it on your character. And also, you'll see this for all of the other NPCs in the world, although that option is configurable. But then taking another look at Fallout 76, one of the big updates for that game to recently go live was One Wasteland. This making it so enemies were almost always attuned to your level, making the game in general a lot more difficult. A similar thing that can be added to Fallout 4 is encounter zone recalculation. By default in Fallout 4, when you enter into an area, you'll have enemies pop up at your level. Unfortunately, once you enter an area for the first time, that level of enemies is reset. Every time they respawn, they will always be at that level. And capture zone recalculation is going to change that, so each time you enter into a certain zone or enemy spawning area, it'll be recalculated based on your current level. The real effect of this being, over the course of a playthrough, enemies will scale more linearly with you, rather than some areas always just being ridiculously easy or way too low of a level. And I think it's actually a pretty positive change. It's definitely brought benefits to Fallout 76, and it does bring benefits to Fallout 4 also. And although those are all the mods you could download right now, there's a couple of other ones I wanted to highlight that are currently a work in progress bringing some features from Fallout 76 to Fallout 4. One of the first big ones is Fallout Appalachia. This is one I initially talked about just around a year ago, and over that year, progress has been continuing at a steady pace, where functionally this mod author is attempting to recreate nearly all of Fallout 76's landscape 
in Fallout 4. Not a port, but an actual recreation of that landscape, but the setting this time around is 185 years later. So the same time Fallout 4 takes place, which is almost 200 years after the events of Fallout 76. It's a very ambitious project, but there are tons of video, like I literally can't show you all of the progress made because there's just too much progress. I can make a 20 minute video talking about this mod alone, but I want to highlight this yet again here for all of you. I'll have a link to this YouTube channel and the Discord where you can get more in depth developer diaries and images, but in a similar but separate vein, we also do have the Commonwealth Responders. More or less, what this mod is aiming to do is actually integrate aspects of the Responders faction from Fallout 76 into Fallout 4. In many regards, kind of a what if if the Responders continued and survived in Fallout 76, assuming they actually did get fully wiped out. This feature in quite a bit in the way of custom content, but also quests. There have been several trailers and even some teaser images posted up on Discord. I'll have a link to the YouTube channel as well as Discord down below. Again, if you want to get more up-to-date updates on this one. But either way, with both of these mods, they're pretty awesome concepts. Remaking some interesting content or an aspect of Fallout 76 in Fallout 4 and at the time of Fallout 4, which is an important part. Either way though, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one. Hopefully you guys found this video informative. Hopefully you just enjoyed it for itself. But until next time, I hope to see you all later.